I feel like a turtle. <laughs> where, where, are we, where are we setting this thing up? Over here. Hey guys, how's it going? We got uh, Kevin here. He's the mule today. He's from Modern Self-Reliance. If you guys don't know, he's actually my brother. And <laughs> I'm putting him to work on my channel. Normally I'm working on his channel, although I'm just mostly running the camera, which is what I'm doing today. So. Give me the camera, you carry this thing. <laughs> nope, it's already on your back. So we got the Russian bear. It's a giant tent and we're in the pine forest. This is the famous pine forest. I can't feel my arm. <laughs> we're almost here. This is the bug out shelter. I'd order this a few. <laughs> <laughs> Substantial. It's a kind of a DIY thing. This is they're limbered up for the journey. That's something. Get the muscles going. I want to set this up as a bug out, like hunt, hunt shelter tent. It's good for moose deer hunting. If you guys are into that. Where did you go? How come you're you're taking a break over there? I got a, a winded. You got the load off anyway. Winded. So this pine forest what I was going to get at is this is the famous bacon forest. So the plan is to not only get the shelter up, but I also want to make some pine, some bacon. And we're going to cook up burgers. Burger, bacon, burger. Bacon, burger. But it's a tree, isn't it? Out of the pine tree bark. Uh. So it's the season. I thought of it last night while I was dreaming about what I, how could I make my burger better? I'm like, you know what? We're going to the pine forest and it's full of trees and it's just the right time. The sap should be flowing, so it should be nice and sweet. After we cook up our burgers, we could drop the pine bark in there and then crisp it up and throw it on our burgers. I think that'll be good. It's like a survival burger. All right. <laughs> He's not sold. Oh, that's sold on it. Let's get our fire started. We'll let that burn down the coal. So by the time we get this shelter set up and tested, then we should be ready to cook. Well, before we get too excited about eating tree bark, I think we should uh, check a specimen here and uh, see if it's any good. So I kind of did a little bit of prep on this tree here, got rid of all the branches. It's an older tree. I think we probably want to pick a younger tree, but they're, they're all kind of similar ages. So we'll try this one if it doesn't work out. We'll, we'll, we'll try a different one. Do you like this one or no? Well, you should know how crooked this thing is. Well, like, yeah, it's, it's not a saw log. It's a, look at that. It's, I don't yeah. you can't even tell. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a not, noodle. It doesn't matter. Like we're not going to kill a tree. We're not going to girdle it. Like if you went all the way around, you'd girdle the tree. And incidentally, that's what they did when they ate tree bark. It was a famine food. So they would cut the whole tree down and they would strip it all the bark and they would just add it as a bulking agent because there's a little bit of sugar in there. Not a lot. That's why it's famine. You just like you had nothing else to eat. So that's what you ate. So Kevin's never tried tree bark. So I think it would be like it's, it's a good time for him to check it. We'll try a little bit raw right now. And then once we get the tent set up and the fire going and everything like that, then we'll we'll cook it and make it proper and put it on the burger. And maybe that'll be the trick. <laughs> tastes like pine tree. Well, it's gonna taste like a pine tree. It's a pine tree. Let's get a let's get a good layer off here. I gotta put the camera down. It, it needs some work here. We got a good run of this. There, 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 there. there. That's the money. That's, that's the good one. That's the that's it right there. <laughs> it's still gross. <laughs> hey, if I had no food at all, well, it tastes like that's what I'm saying. That's a famine food. Can you imagine if you ate like a whole ton of it and just like bound up inside your I'm not swallowing Inside that. your colon. <laughs> but it tastes like, I'm trying to think what it tastes like. It tastes like a pine tree. It tastes like a pine tree smells. No, it's, it's, it's got, it's, it's like eating the rind off an orange. It's, like, got, it's got some acidity in there. Yeah, you got, it's like Whee! eating. The, I'm not eating that <laughs> on my burger. You can eat so that on your burger? We gotta go. Yeah, that's not sweet at we'll all. Pick a different one, and we'll fry it up in the oils, and it's gonna get crispy like it's a. It's got old man bitters in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the old stuff. We'll get we'll get a different one. You supposed to take the good stuff off? This one. There you go. This piece. Yeah. Pretend you're really hungry. <laughs> I am really hungry. I sold out. You're not sold on there. All right. Not fooling around with this. We're gonna get we're gonna get some nice big long strips. We'll set them aside. We'll get this tent set up. We'll get fire set up, and we'll uh, we'll make some proper bake. <laughs> there we go. There's a good load of it. Got some. Probably sort out the woodier stuff. And then uh, I don't know if you want it that stringy, but it's kind of like maybe it'll be, end up being like pasta. Mm. <laughs> They're the crunchy noodles. Well, that lit up a little too easily. We're obviously in a pine forest. It's covered with pine needles. This stuff makes really good tinder. And it also, uh, you know, presents the issue that there, there could be a little bit of a fire issue here. We don't want to burn up Kevin's forest. He wouldn't appreciate that so much. So we're going to keep an eye on this right now. 
and we're gonna scrape her out all the pine needles and make sure that there's bare ground surrounding our fire pit. So as you can see, this stuff ignites like crazy. It's got tons of oils in here, which is something Kevin wants to address with this forest moving forward. Because if a fire comes through here, it's going all the way through. So uh, Kevin with some forest management, he's gonna be doing quite a bit of work here on the property with regards to these pines to avoid this exact issue. Now we made a fire on purpose, but a fire can happen accidentally with a lightning strike, you know, just an errand spark from any fire that we burn on the property. <laughs> Look how quickly that goes. All, all these trees here, all these branches come from the pines and because there's no sunlight hitting the lower branches, they end up dying because the tree doesn't need them anymore. It's green at the top, but at the bottom, all these branches are dead. So you can see how this would be an issue. The off-grid cabin, we got the cube over there. Everything's over there, so there's a lot at stake. It's not the right time to be burdened pine. It's like, as you got hardwood, it doesn't throw sparks. Pine tends to throw a lot of sparks. So that's what we started it with, but I'm confident once we switch to hardwood, we're not gonna throw as many sparks and light the fire over there. There's no way around it. This is a massive tent. It is 14 and a half feet long. They said, they have smaller models and they said, I could get a smaller model. I'm like, I have a smaller models. Like if I wanna go do like a winter, or a fall and I want to be like comfy, comfy, comfortable. I want a big tent where you can spread out and then you can have multiple people coming and going and not upset everybody. So th this is the Cuboid 4.4. Um, like I say, it's big. It's, so it's not something you're gonna, you're gonna port. Uh, you could put, put this or as a pack in a uh, winter expedition. I think it's not, it's not so heavy that you couldn't, uh, you couldn't sled it in. But uh, as Kevin will attest, it's not something that you want to necessarily carry on your back for a big distance. Well, if you drive up to your site, yeah, it's this, a this it, thing's a hundred square feet. It's you, a you almost need a permit to build it on your property. <laughs> it's it is it's a, not a small tent. I didn't look at any of the instructions. I know nothing about this tent, so I'm going to give you the first-hand impressions of it and whether it's suitable for like a moose hunt or deer hunt or just like car camping, like family car camping. This would fit easily in an SUV or truck. That's the first impression. It just keeps opening up more and more and more. <laughs> this thing is, it's massive. I don't know if the, the wide angle lens is probably not giving it justice, but when I said 14 and a half feet wide, it is 14 and a half. It's still, it's still going. How do I get in this thing? Where's the door? Is there a door? Oh, you got in the door. Here, here's the door so we can get inside here. Oh, they made it white on the inside. That's a cool right. feature. So it makes it actually brighter in here than you would think. So I think the only thing you had to worry about was on the back side here was kind of getting into the trees. Where's the fire? Way over that way, don't worry. That would not be good. <laughs> so all he's doing is pushing, pushing on the edges here. He's just, he's just gra grabbing the, the points there and just pushing the points out. There and then pops out. <laughs> this thing is so easy to set up, actually. Oh, there's a thermal uh, it is, break. It is double layer. That is neat. There's a. Oh, it's zipper. It's Velcro. There you go. Dude, open the Velcro here. Hello. That's so you can. Sh it's so you can shoot out the window. Dude, I'm gonna use this for turkey hunting. This is. Oh wait, I want to use the tarp shelter. Well, now I have some choices because that. This is freaking amazing, man. You could bring. You could put a whole family in here. And uh, you know how cool it would be to hunt in here? You got room for like, I don't know how many cots, but you could put, you could put as many people as you wanted in here. Put 10 people if you really wanted to. Three shoot windows, four shoot windows, and two doors. That means you're not climbing all over people when you're coming in and out. Man, this thing, <laughs> I'm impressed. Look at it, it's got a little. Oh, it's got a gasket there. We gotta take that the velcro part off that's what keeps it probably from leaking so you can put the stove on this end or on the other end there's the bottom zipper oh so you zip it in okay so we oh. won't put that in that's a divider if you guys want to fool around you guys buy buy your own russian tent and you can you can set up the divider but i think this is the this is the floor but i don't want to put this floor in. this is the this is the floor it comes with this is the standard floor i don't want to put the standard floor and i want to because i want to if, if i want to set this up additional extra add-ons here but uh we got four of these panels. These will spread out and then it'll keep the floor insulated. So you have a nice place to walk on. You can go barefoot or in socks or whatever. Feels like gym class all day long. With these. We're doing gymnastics today. All right, we got all the windows, all the doors open. So all we could shoot any critters that come by from four different direct, well, technically I guess six, we could use the doors too. 
But uh, we got to figure out what next step is. We got all our extra pieces, so I don't really know. But I found the directions here. I think the directions, or maybe it's like a certification. I can't really. Maybe you can make sense of that. Go ahead and read that. Is uh, who who made it? It was certified by. Perhaps you put something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought fluent Russian. Is he, are these these are the no? It's is that the directions? Yeah, those are the directions. <laughs> what does it say? Um, <laughs> can you read Russian letters? No, they're just a bunch of letters and symbols. <laughs> now you guys can see that, but uh, it's uh, Russian Russian block letters. <laughs> well, that's what that you're making fun of the Russian. I'm language. not making fun of the language. I just can't read it. It's yeah. <laughs> you make make sense of that. They're not. They're it just, looks like hieroglyphics. <laughs> but they're just symbols. They're, they're, there's there's some letters. There's an E. An E is prominent in here. I think we're gonna have to figure this out on our own. There's a phone number. Let's call them. <laughs> Pretty camel. cool. Pretty cool. It's got camo too. You could, you could like, if you wanna, if you wanna go on an expedition. You just take the floor up with you, and then you go set up yourself a ground blind. Velcroing it together, and there's, a, I think there's a way to fasten it to the edges. Maybe not this one. I think the other, the other zipper portion that we didn't put up has that capacity. Kevin's got his shoes off because uh, I think it just warrants that. It's like. It's got a nice, it's nice and insulated. It's not overly, it's not like really, really insulated, but it's like, it's got a, a top layer and there's a little bit, there, maybe there's a doubled up and there's a little bit of foam in there. Well, Kevin's, uh, Kevin's appreciating the rest. Get back to work. We gotta make some tree bacon. Now this is substantial. It's like, why am I messing around building log cabins when I can just get a pop-up tent? Yeah, done in three minutes. Like literally three minutes. It didn't even have to, no tent poles, no nothing. It was just, bam building for anybody that was worried about our fire and like burning the forest down and all that stuff look look how calm and controlled that fire is right now we got a nice hardwood flame we've got warmth coming a lot of warmth coming out of this is cooking warmth now but we're gonna let that burn down a little bit more i think we can uh we have some time to set the stove up make sure that we have all the parts and pieces so we can get that operating and then we can get ourselves some bacon <sighs> getting hungry all that work all that effort to set up that tent. <laughs> this is one of the easy ones. So I'm happy for it. After all those survival challenges I've done, I am super thrilled about, you know, just trying something out. Trying out something that makes my life easier. All right guys, stove time. We've got the Canimus, the Canimus S. I think it's Canimus S model. Anyway, I'll, I'll link these all down below. You can look up the tent. You can look up the, the uh, stove and uh the floor is I, it, I we just looked it up it's a triple layer i couldn't figure out how many layers it was it was definitely more than one insulated so uh kevin knows more about stove so why don't you why don't you tell me all the it's kind of weird <laughs> it's like there's a vent here maybe that's is that for like that's the damper the damper the damper is at the back it's oh, kind of it's like a little I cap you, you got this upside back. down this guy goes back. oh there. i wasn't sure because i thought it, originally i thought it was like how the smoke would come out no. but then no it comes out the top so Kevin's is going to add, um, what do you got? All the stove pipes. All the, all looks about the same, right? It's the same, thick, same thickness all the way up. So there's no, there's no fudgery. There's no, there's no mysteries. You got to put the seam at the back to make it look pretty. We're going to make it look nice. <laughs> wow. Have you ever installed a stove? Well, that's, 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 that's pretty easy to go. So we're going to go straight out the roof there. And there's a little gasket at the top. And uh, it's actually cool because the, the plates here, I'll show you guys in a second, but you can take the plates off and you can actually get some ambiance. And one more. Maybe you gotta. <laughs> you can't. Can you figure out how to do that? Well, hang on. Watch, do this. watch now. Maybe it's a chimney. Chimney. <laughs> I, I got it. Play, play around with enough time. You think it's the first one? There you, you go. You gotta go straight up the roof there. there. Okay. All right. That works. Pop it in. You can get closer. And then you can reach. You still can't reach though. I can. <laughs> you get it? Oh, well. <laughs> there you go life ha life hacks that's the that's the uh this thing's, this thing's the cool. angel on top of the that's christmas, christmas tree, tree. <laughs> this is our, our lit what, what does that do anyway stop the wind from blowing down yes it's diffuser i don't know what it is diffuser, it's like a, diffusion it's a rain cap it's a, so the rain doesn't get in the tube <laughs> there this this is the front that's the front that's the front oh, and I then gotcha. and that's then, why i didn't understand because the damper and then what you I do thought the damper was at, at the back the what, damper at the front so look at so these things come off, which is really cool because you can make this whole thing glow because it's got side viewing windows for the fire, which is crazy for a tiny little camp stove. That's neat. And it's got a, another plate on that side too. Well, we so. can take them both off. And then they all, they, they're so smart. They gave you, they gave us what, like extra plates? They give you extra plates and it says in the directions in case you break them. So if 
you know, it would really suck if you're in a remote location and you broke your glass and you don't, you can't operate your stove because it's got no sides, but they give you replacement plates. Th those are protective plates, so when you're carrying it, anyway. And th I imagine you can probably buy replacement glass too, but that's- well, a ceramic glass. Any, any stove company can make you new glass. There you go. There you go. Cool, so that, right, so right. that's, we just feed it, feed the fire like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, stove pipe. Like what else do we, that's it. That's all you need to know. Well, I think, I think we should fire that up. So it's pretty cool too, is they, they actually give you a little shovel. So you have like everything you need to get started here. And we're trying to read through these directions. They're not helping too much, but they're, they got pictures in there. So it's kind of like reading almost every manual nowadays when you get it from China. So you just kind of look through the pictures and you kind of get a rough, oh, there's English here, dude. There's English right here. I said there was English. Oh. <laughs> gloves too, look at it. They gloves. It, it gloves, yeah. Get How gloves. smart is that? Like, think of this, like, they, they, they did a lot of thinking when they put this thing together. They're smart, smart people. Kevin's gone to search for a, a fire blanket. He thinks there's a fire blanket that comes with it. There's a, there's a carry case too. So after you're done with the stove, you can put it back in the case. And there's cases for the feet. And I think we got everything else sorted out. There's a, I don't know, some random pieces here. We don't really know what all of the pieces do. Fire liner. So what do you think you could you put, put it underneath? You think you could put the floor all the way across and then put that underneath? That's what they, it says in the directions. All right, well, let's trust them. So let's, uh, we, we don't need it here. We do don't we? need it there. No, you we need to, well, I'm more concerned about the pine needles than the floor. I think if we put this underneath, then we can know what to worry about the pine needles. All right, we're going to do that now? Sure. So I'm pretty curious to see if this, how this, how this whole system would work out on the ice, ice fishing. I know obviously it'll work for like a for like a, a hunt camp, perfect for hunt camp. Uh, nice big spaces. Obviously you're going to be car camping. You're not going to be like lugging it on somebody's back unless you have a mule with you. But that uh, that'll be uh, maybe you just bring an extra person who is the mule. I don't know. Maybe you can find. Maybe you know somebody in your life who likes to carry heavy things. But uh, it's a heavy load for one person, I would say. But it's just perfect. Like if you're going to go drive for moose camp or. You want to do it like an expedition where you can drive right to it more or less, or you can pull it in with a sled. This is definitely sledable for sure. hundred percent sledable. Do you know what's inside? This? There's a spark arrestor in this thing. Cool. Which I don't is... know what that is. <laughs> well, it's got a little diagram. I don't know if you can see this little diagram. It's actually a really neat. So I was looking at the chimney at being at the front, which is a really odd place for a chimney, but there's actually like a baffle that makes the smoke go to the back and then come back around and up the chimney. And it kind of, it'll stop any sparks from landing on your tent. That's really neat. They, there's a lot of thought going into this little stove. I like stoves. So this is, this is a really cool stove. It, it happens to be all stainless steel. So it's never going to look rusty. This thing's good for 2,500 hours. It sounds like a lot. 2,500, 2,500. That's a, how many, somebody's got to translate into years. How many years is that? 2,500. Well, years. you got to go uh, like 6,000, 6,000 hours of work a year, isn't it? If you work 40 hours a week. So it's like. 2,500? 2,500. It's, so it's like four or five years of use. No, no, straight, no, 6,000 hours is a, is a year's worth of work. <laughs> 40 hours I can't figure it out. You guys are going to figure it out. By the end of this video, we're going to have it figured out. Well, should we I get us? I'm going to figure it out right you're now. You're going to figure it out right now. He's got his calculator. I'm going to go. He's, you, need, uh, you ready for some coals? Okay. We're just, I'm just going to grab a handful of coals and then we can we can throw some sticks in there and start starting a, starting a brand new fire. Oh, she's precarious. There we go. Okay. You need some sticks. Well, we need a little some sticks oh, too. Uh, with the viewing window at the side, it's like a fish tank. No, that's, fires. That's pretty cool. You could see everything go in the fire. That is pretty neat. It's gonna cast like a really good amount of light too at night. It's pretty neat. And if you don't want the light, then just just cover it up. That's pretty cool. And then you can uh, you you can actually pull that little lever out so that you don't burn your fingers. Cool. It's a snuffer. It's like a snuffer yeah. on, a, on a, for a candle. It's a little sim simple design. It's really cool. But it's but it's neat. Cool. Right on. Well, we got our bacon here, but the problem is, well, it's not bacon. <laughs> we, 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 got our, we got our bark here, which uh, Kevin's really excited about eating, of course, but uh, we can't just put it in the pan and fry it up. Well, we could try, but it'd probably just burn because it's wood. So we got to set that aside for now and uh, got a couple burgers. And then what I'm hoping is that there'll be some grease left over after we cook the burgers that we can uh, fry the, uh, bacon in it and then we can have it as a topper so we're just going to do a standard this is a standard camp grill camp camp meal camp grill camp grilling that i probably would have done years and years ago before i got into wild foods just straight up burgers i love burgers for camping super easy 
sticks are bonus or what? Yeah, there's there's gonna be some junk in there. Pine needles. Well, stuff? we're gonna put bark in there. So how bad oh. can it get? So okay. we're just gonna we're gonna flatten this out and should uh, should cook up real fast. Simple cooking. I feel like we should get some gloves. We might. We, we're gonna need some gloves in the, in a few seconds here. But uh, if you guys ever camp, fire cook, just do it like this. Get it, get yourself a cast iron pan. Gloves, comes right, are super duper important. You know, make sure your fire's burnt down so there's not a ton of smoke. And uh, you know, the, the, the gloves are handy because what you can do is you, you'll be able to pick up your pan, pull it away from the fire, and then uh, adjust it too, right? Because it's all about controlling the temperature. You don't need a grill, you don't need anything fancy. Unless you want to get fancy, it's completely up to you. But uh, how easy is that, man? It's not ready. For cheese. Not ready for cheese yet. No. You know, a rare. It's still, it's still moving. You want to live on the edge? No. <laughs> a rare burger? Yeah. yeah. No. 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 Well, we got to get some grease on there anyway, so we got to let that cook a little bit longer. That's a perfectly cooked burger. And no pink inside. Not well, supposed to be pink inside a burger. I don't care what anybody says. Hmm. It's got the adobo taste underneath it. Well, I guess Kevin's not gonna wait. I'm gonna put some bar bar burger. Bacon. Bacon. Bacon bark. Yeah, I'm gonna just put some bacon on your bark. Some bark bacon on your burger. I'm just gonna fold it up. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. <laughs> Making it like gourmet bacon bark. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it like I do all the time. This ca caveman bark. This kind of broke up a little bit. It sucked up the oil. I think I got finer shavings and I, uh, last time I, what I did was I peeled the bark off and then I would shave off the inner edge. But I think if you just take the outer edge off and then just shave that inner edge, you could probably get it like a good, uh, what's a really fine uh, pasta? What's a feta, not fettuccine, but like, like- Spaghettini? Spaghettini, like really thin, thin pieces. I think that's the way to go. You don't Angel want- Angel hair pasta. Angel hair, that's it. You don't want like big chunks of it. And I don't know if I'm gonna get, I'll probably get a crispy after a while here. I feel like my burger's probably gonna get killed, so I'm gonna take that guy off. And uh, it heats up on top here. We wanna get a little bit crunchy, because we, we want it to like to be like chips, like bark chips. Like, you can't frown on it too bad, because like, like beaver make a whole living just eating bark. That's all they eat. So it can't be, you know, if it's good enough for a beaver, it's gotta be good enough for you. Cows eat grass. That's right, man. They, but we eat the cows. Well, you could spend all, your whole life eating bark like a beaver does, or you could uh, eat the beaver. <laughs> the choice is clear, man. Just, just You just decide how you want to spend your time at the end of the day. You could just spend all day eating beaver, or you can, uh, you know, I know it's the other way around. You could spend all day eating tree bark, or you could spend, you know, a couple minutes eating beaver. Well, she's crisping up nicely. I'm gonna throw a little sprinkle of wadobo on there. I think that'll it'll make all the difference in the world. We're gonna shake it up and uh, we'll give it a taste to see if it's burger worthy. I think that's real. That's the real trick. Is if you, if you can if you want to stick, you know, tree bacon on a burger. It says something about tree bacon, and it's it's more than just a famine food. It's like real food. Grab a chip and see if you can't eat that now. Did you get a good one? You gotta pick like the, the best ones. Don't pick, don't don't like, don't leave it to chance. Pick a nice crispy one. There's a crispy one, there's one. I thought I could chew it apart, but I can't. <laughs> you should have made it thinner. Thinner. Like that's edible. It's got, you know what it's got? At this texture, it's kind of like, um. what's that seaweed? Kelp? Is it kelp? Yeah, kind of like kelp-like. Right. Dark green kelpy. Like it's got that texture to it, but then it's got it's got the grease and then the adobo. And then if you chew it long enough, it tastes like wood again. 
can't go past past the point. That's actually good. Like, if my kids were hungry, <laughs> my kid, and I was a famine, I'd be like, dude, just eat it. I think I think you could convince a lot of people to just eat that. What do you think? I'm not gonna swallow it. I'm worried about it getting stuck. You worried about getting bunged up? I'm worried about getting stuck. There was a guy in a survival show who actually ate so much of it he had to get pulled from the show. Wow. Because he got bunged up. <laughs> <laughs> Question is, well, if I'm going to swallow this or not, and if I'm going to put on a burger, and the answer to that is no and no. So it's not that good. Check out the Russian Bear. I'll leave all the links down in the description below. They were kind enough to sponsor my outing today, and I really needed to just take a rest, have a burger, eat some tree bacon, and kind of chill out. Going to give it a five-five uh, for star rating. And uh, we'll just have to test it out, see if it, if it copes in the real world conditions that I want to put it through on a big challenge. So stay tuned. We'll see this again in the future. See you in the next one.